Hi everybody, I'm Mike Shank and I'm here to talk tech with you. If you recall from last time, we were at Daytona International Speedway talking about high speed tracks and what it took to get our Riley Ford EcoBoost around there. Today, I'm at Sebring for the 12 hour race, same car, but in high downforce configuration. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about on the front of our Ford EcoBoost Riley is our dive planes. Now, a lot of people have seen these around the paddock here and they're giant. A little bit bigger than we'd like, however, we needed this to get the kind of downforce numbers that we needed to achieve to become equal with the other cars. You can see we have a lower and we have an upper. These things are made out of carbon fiber and they are very, very effective and not nearly as draggy as they look here. It's really amazing stuff. Ford Racing did a great job uh, engineering these and we've got a lot of test miles on them and we're very confident of what they do for this car. The second thing is we come up the nose here you will notice what we call exit ducts. These, these pieces right here, we can interchange to go from what you see here that we call the five any to the five Audi, which increase in height to about this level and increase the downforce, or we can do a blank panel here, which is the least amount of downforce. These items combined give us the balance that we need on the stuff for the back of the car that I'm gonna show you in a minute. And while we're here, folks, you can see a few things on just in general work on how the car uh, handles air for the radiator. You can see right here from left to right, this silver area is air intake for the radiator. The radiator sits right here. To the left and right of this duct, you see the air inlet for the brake coolers. So we have air in for the radiator, air in for the brake ducts. Now we're talking about the front end. Here's a great bird's eye view of how the uh, air comes out of our radiator. Now this is a direct view in the back side of the radiator and all the shapes and compound curves you see contribute to how well the, uh, the air flows out of the radiator and up and above and over the car. This is interesting stuff and there's a lot of detail into this and a lot goes into this to perfect it. Okay, at Daytona, if you recall, right here where my hand is, sat our rear brake duct scoops. And you will see they're no longer here now. What you will notice on forward of the front axle now is this great new brake scoop. We found this to be a much more effective tool to cool our brakes, especially at the hard braking Sebring Raceway. You'll notice that we can change the front inlet size to cool more or less the rear brake temperatures. Very effective tool tested by CFD and wind tunnel to be the most effective, smallest opening we could create. Okay, so another new element for a high downforce track. Same rear wing that we used at Daytona. However, you will notice that the flap is cranked up a lot more than it was at Daytona. As part of the BOP or the balance of power in the aerodynamic side, we get a selection of three holes and three holes only that we can use for this rear flap. Obviously, more flap, more drag, more downforce, less flap, more speed, less downforce. As we move down, you, you see what we call the rear spoiler. This rear, rear spoiler is at a spec angle. This is 1.5 degrees compared to Daytona, which was like seven or eight degrees. This is spec and can't vary more than a half a degree, and it works in conjunction with the upper wing and the rear arrow on the body. So we have saved the best for last, and here it is. This is the elephant in the room. This is the 2014 spec diffuser that all DP type machines have to use. You'll notice, one, how big it is, how tall it is, how much it sticks out from the back of the car, and of course, easy to see the fins that separate the airflow as it comes back through the car. This is a very interesting piece. This piece alone adds nearly 500 pounds of downforce instantly when you put it on the car. Now when you do that, that's on the rear of the car mostly. So when you do that, you gotta come up with those giant dive planes that I showed you earlier today. This is a big piece. It's one of the big reasons we're two or three seconds faster per lap. And it's an interesting device. We don't know how great it's gonna race. We know at Daytona, uh, we didn't use it. This will be the first race for it and we're excited to see how it races. You can see it can act as a bumper, which sometimes we do hit each other, but in general though, it's very effective, very efficient way of speeding the air up under the car, which creates that downforce that we're looking for. As part of the high downforce package for Sebring, we've also had to actually change our exhaust. As we look into the engine bay here, if you follow my finger, you can see the white pipe there. The exhaust now comes out the side of the car. 
at Daytona, it went straight out the back. Reason being, we have this diffuser I just described to you, and we don't have room for an exhaust pipe. So now the exhaust pipe comes out of the turbo, does a hard right turn, and comes right out the side of the car. It's very simple, actually. So in general terms, we have 2,600 pounds of total downforce at Sebring trim or high downforce configuration. At Daytona, we had 1,600 pounds. So we're talking about 1,000 pounds of downforce in this new configuration I've showed you today. Should provide excellent racing, well-balanced Daytona prototypes, and exciting wheel-to-wheel -wheel action. This is Mike Shank. I hope you'll join us again at Long Beach. We'll talk about pit stops, strategy, and everything it takes to get a car in and out of the box in the Tudor Championship Series.